Hi guys, Roxanne here from Tiny Home Living. Well, Chris and Bob are off on their little road trip. And um, I'm on my own here today, so I'm just trying to get a bunch of little things done inside. Going to go check on the usual things, the greenhouse, water that stuff, check on Ruby. And um, what I am going to try and do today for sure is get those chicken aprons done. But before I get uh, started today, I just want to ask you to like and subscribe, share this video with your family and friends, and uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, that really helps. Um, so let's get going with the day. Ruby is more than ready to get out. Are you coming, sweetie? Yes, you are more than ready to come out, aren't you? There you go. <laughs> Ruby was more than ready to get outside, weren't you, sweetie? Mm -hmm. I'm going to prop this door open so the little devils don't get stuck behind the door. Yes, you've got a lot to do, don't you? again. Now I collect, came to collect the eggs again and earlier I had moved all the eggs from the other boxes into this one because there was a broken one in there. And Hazel's sitting here again. Now I'm pretty sure she is the late layer so maybe she just needs to lay her egg or maybe she's going to decide instead of stealing babies she's going to hatch some. So I'm just going to leave her for a little while. The eggs are all underneath her, today's eggs. I think there was only seven, so if she lays one, that'll be eight. I'll come back and check later. Ruby and her babies are busy. So beautiful out. Still no wind. Felt like it was going to rain again, but well, I thought I would check on the greenhouse, and I can see lots of new branches on my eucalyptus already. I want to be able to snip some of this and put it in my bedroom. I just love that smell. And um, you can see all the new leaves that came on these plants where they were snipped. These were the ones that um, were snipped. Not too sure about the stick. Oh, but look, you can see where the blossom was. And now... It's going to be a jalapeno, so you can see how many jalapenos, there's another one, are going to be on this plant. And again, this is the one that I bought. Um, there's another one. Because it was on sale. If you get them when they're kind of mangy looking and uh, a little further into the season, uh, my little tree doesn't look like it's suffered at all from me doing my little pruning massacre. So that's good. I was thinking I might come out and find it half dead, but I took all the lower branches off and then I basically alternated. I took um, every other branch in here. My herbs have all perked up and doing really well. This parsley is already growing like crazy. The parsley kind of goes bananas. My peppers, I'm going to wait until they grow a little more to transplant them into this tub and this tub. And um, my house caps over here are doing awesome. Um, you can see again, these are the ones I snipped and you can see the little buds coming out beside them and the same over here. Um, I tried it because I had those other ones were snipped and you can see where I'm going to get all new branches there. So obviously that is a good thing. There's quite a few ripe berries on here now. And I found a couple of berries that had dropped off. And again, I know absolutely nothing about um, 
house caps or saving seeds, but I did buy a seed saving book and I am going to try to see if there's any way to save seeds from these if I find them drop like that. So that's good. Chris is the one that likes jalap yeah, I shouldn't say that. Jalapenos. We call them jalapenos or jalapenos. Um, he likes that stuff on his pizza and stuff. I don't like it. So this has gone to seed too. I should probably make an attempt at saving seeds just to see if I can do it. Um, and I'm going to run out back. I just want to make sure there aren't any chickens going in the house because I left the door ajar for Sadie. And sometimes they're getting pretty close to coming in the house now. Are you coming with me? Okay, she's going to go inside. Go check um, what Chris got done last night. He was out quite late last night um, getting that last footing done in the middle of the barn, the middle of the wall. And then Bob have gone on their little road trip today. They're like partners in crime these days. So yeah, he's got all these footings cribbed up now. I think he had one left, the one in the center to do. Um, yes, last night he was out here quite late. So this is already, we're gonna go to town tomorrow and get ca concrete. Um, after fiddling around with the blocks and layers and everything for so long, he decided this would be the best way to do it. And I think he's right. We've got to take the DR to the shop to get fixed and you can see what a mess this is now. Um, I like to be able to do, Chris does the major part with the big tractor, but now this tree was so loaded with um, uh, blossoms and now I see something's eating it again. I printed off a recipe for um, like a natural bug repellent. So I'm going to try that. I don't want to put pesticides or anything on here because, of course, we want to promote the bees as well. And it showed a picture of the, the cutting on the leaves to tell you whether it was cutter bees or the bad bugs. Of course, I, I can never remember which one it is. But um, this tree is really, really late. But look at this. I haven't looked at it in a few days and all the buds are about to pop on this tree. This is the one that Chris thought was dead. And I basically did go through it when I pruned and took off anything that I thought was dead. But obviously there is a lot of buds on this tree. This was absolutely loaded with cherries when we bought it last year. And look at this little beauty. Now that it's blossomed, I can see, well, that looks like there's going to be blossoms too. Um, I pruned this really well last year down by the ground, which was good. It almost It's almost like two trees. So, um, and this one here, these two are the really late trees, but they are getting some blossoms. So we'll just keep hoping, I guess, that uh, they all pop. There's some coming at the ends of the branches. So, that one's really sorry looking too, but it's got so many branches and there are buds up there. So, I'm holding out hope that it's gonna do well. And this is the Gloria tree, the same. This is the one I got the little tree in the greenhouse from. And our mangy, um, oh, I can never remember, the Battleford. The Battleford tree has got blossoms on it. I could probably come back now to this one and prune it because you can see it's been chewed here, probably by a deer. Um, that's why we have the Irish Spring Soap hanging in it. It's a little branch coming out here, a little one here. Probably take that dead piece off and this dead piece off and that would maybe help it. Might take that lower branch off too. But the Gloria tree is doing really well. Again, this one was loaded with apples when we bought it and we got absolutely nothing off it last year. I wanted to check on my rhubarb. I had to put the stakes in here because 
you can see again, I need to mow this either with the small mower. I was using the small mower to go in between the rhubarb and the blueberries, which are doing nothing as well, um, so that I could find the rhubarb because these two are smaller plants and I was having a really hard time finding them. Gooseberries are doing really well. I can remember eating these as a child in Ontario. Nasty, nasty, nasty. But nothing a few hundred pounds of sugar can't fix, right? Um, I was thinking putting them in with Hascaps might be an interesting combination because these sort of have little, I don't even know what you call them, like, like they're a little more grainy, whereas the Hascaps are more pulpy. Once this rhubarb gets a little bit bigger, I will come and um, pull. See, that broke off. You don't want that. If you pull the um, stalks, it promotes even more growth. So if they get big enough and you can pull the leaves, it just promotes the growth. Uh, this one's doing really well. That's the best one. But I'll wait and let them get as big as I can and um, pull the leaves, but you want to pull the stalks so that it comes out um, like that, intact, and that actually, um, and then just throw the leaf. There was a lady that let us um, pick rhubarb at her place. I've never seen such a monstrous um, rhubarb patch, and of course it's, you know, from one of these old, old farms. And um, she let us pick rhubarb, and that's what she told us. We didn't know. We were cutting it. And um, she said, pull it, and then cut the end off. And that just gives you more growth. So Chris got the hammock up and was sneaking a nap the other day without me knowing. He's got the barricade up here. Now he can hide behind the barn in the hammock. So again, I haven't looked out here for a couple days, and super happy. Did not know that there were, this tree was full of buds now. And um, I got the garden finished yesterday and then it rained a lot again. So that's gonna be awesome timing for the garden. Just a quick check on Ruby and the babies. Make sure they're okay. My goodness, they're getting big. Even their eyes, I can see the difference in their eyes from here. They're getting so big. Aren't they, Ruby? It's hard to fit them all underneath you now. It's a cloudy day, to, like totally overcast, but it's just, to me, this is the, the nicest kind of day to be outside. Um, you're not sweating to death, you're not dying from the heat. Um, and uh, it just it's just so beautiful out. Um, so happy I got the rest of these seeds done last night. And of course, um, getting the little tomato transplants in the ground before all that rain. I think the garden will do really well because of that. And that's unusual for the middle of the day. Look at the flag. No wind at all. Just beautiful out. What do you think? I think that's the inspector. Nope, that's not the inspector. Oh my goodness, on the list for today is the aprons. I have got to go get that done. Look at that poor baby. Hey, sweetie. See, should, there seems to be quite a bit of interaction here at the fence, and I think that's what the video that I watched was saying, that they basically interact. Um, now I'm seeing one chicken, that one over by the gate, is really different. The feathers are really different. It's much lighter. They're all sort of uniform in color. And then there's one just going under the little ramp whose um, feathers are totally darker. Completely different. So I'm just, it'll be interesting to see what we get out of here. And their, um, their combs are starting to develop, but I can't see any difference yet as to what would be a rooster and what would be a hen. Obviously we're hoping for more hens. I don't know if you can see it. Right there is where the robin put its nest, which to me is just bizarre. You got all of these trees 
and it builds its nest in that precarious position. Um, I'm just going to see how close I can. I want to check the egg box. But, and I hear somebody doing the lucky thing. Um, like she's laying. I have to keep an eye on these guys. I see a hole down there at the edge of the gate. I think they could still squeeze out if they wanted to. Just want to see if she'll stay on the nest if I come really slow to check. The egg boxes, nesting boxes. I think I'll take the long way around to go. Oh, look at that. Somebody broke an egg again. Why do you think it's that darned? Hazel. Okay, so that's not the broken one. This is the broken one. Hmm. Put these over here, maybe. See, I, you're supposed to clean all of this bedding out when you do this, too. And I don't really want to do it with my bare hands, but yuck. video that I watched said if they get a taste for eating the eggs. And obviously somebody is. So I've got five there. Look how close she let me get this time. She's keeping an eye on me. But um, I'm surprised I got this close. Instead of going that way back to the house, I'll go this way around the chicken run so that I don't disturb her because I think she flies off and of course she's trying to keep her babies warm and she leaves the nest every time I come around the corner so what do we got down here oh two nice big ones in here too I'm gonna put these oh they're nice big ones I'm gonna put them in here clean out some poop here too you know, if you told me years ago I would be picking up poop with my bare hands, chicken poop with my bare hands, I would have told you you were crazy. Here I am, turning into an absolute certifiable crazy chicken lady. And you, sweetie, I have got to get the apron done for you today. Look at Mama's still there. Oh. Please. She puts up with the noise from you lot, doesn't she? She puts up with you guys. I don't know why she would even build a nest in your neighborhood. Yeah, these guys are all... I mean, they must have said something. Said something. See, I'm talking like a chicken. Um... They made a noise because I threw that egg out there and they're all after it now. So that's that's good she stayed in the nest that time. I'm going to take the long way around. Ruby has gone in with her babies. Maybe it's nap time. I'll go this way so I don't disturb Mama Robin. I think I'm going to get a couple more little things done and go do the sewing because um, those poor babies need an apron. A couple of them are really bad. I keep saying that and I really need to get it done. But again, getting this garden seeded, uh, I, we are a little late, but I think with, it's supposed to, we're supposed to get a bit of rain almost every day for a couple of weeks. So for Alberta, that's phenomenal. And we might end up with an even better garden, even though we waited a bit. I've got uh, this duvet cover that needs, I made out of two flat sheets. So I need to um, put some Velcro to close the opening because I can't find my buttonholer. <laughs> and I've got uh, the elastic and everything cut. I forgot to pin the elastic inside here, so I've got to do that. But I've got four um, chicken aprons cut out. 
I might have been better to put some stenum on the inside, but this will, these will be my first try. Got a couple of navy and red ones and a couple of black and red ones. I made them out of my old flannel shirts because I figured my chickens will match me then if they're wearing flannel shirts like me. Oh, I can't find the manual for this new sewing machine, so I'm hoping... I don't have any trouble with it. If not, I suppose I could go to the internet and try to. I probably should have put my glasses on too. <sighs> Getting to the point where I can't do much without my glasses. Oh dear. Anyway, see if I can get this video set to iron this afterwards, but I'll see what it looks like. Uh, I'm not sure my stitch length. Uh, we'll see. seam. So... number two isn't that cute with the little red ruffle the other ones um, have white ruffle which I know with the way those chickens <laughs> bathe in the dirt <laughs> I know it was silly but I, I already had the ruffles I didn't go and buy them I had them in my sewing scraps so I just had to put ruffles on them so, because you know me, I've got my flannel shirts on, but then I always put earrings on or something. Um, so, <laughs> kind of a city-fied country girl. So are my chickens. <laughs> Gonna get this other stuff done now. Now, my next project is, and again, people like to make fun of me for this. If you're wondering why my TV is covered up by my soft fuzzy black cape, it is because I'm playing this um, music at night to help me go to sleep that uh, is supposed to be different frequencies that are good for your brain and whatever. So I, I ha I'm using the TV for the sound because the DVD player is right here, but it lights the TV up which keeps me awake. <laughs> so. I have my black cape over it and I use this mu I'm using this music when I go to sleep. In case you're wondering why I have the TV covered with a black cape. So, the next project is these two sheets that I sewed together to make a duvet cover. Um, it was cheaper to buy two sets of sheets, twin sheets, than it was to buy a duvet cover. Well, we couldn't find a twin du duvet cover. Chris wanted something in blue plaid. So he makes fun of me, but I took these, all these Velcro strips and everything and the belt and loops and everything off of a pair of shorts that he was going to burn. Uh, those ones at Costco that he loves the shorts, you zip the legs off. So the uh, legs are no, he never uses the legs. He buys them for the shorts. Um, now I was annoyed because he cut or he let them wear out so that um, the zippers around the knees, he cut the one zipper so only one side of the zipper was any good. So I couldn't salvage those big long uh, zippers. But I mean just the Velcro alone would probably cost me more than what he paid for the pants. So I'm using them to um, make closures for the duvet cover. First of all, I'm not doing buttons because I can't find my button holder. So I'll just sew one square on there, the other square on there, and I'll put maybe half a dozen across the opening um, because he was finding it really annoying that the duvet kept coming out. And I often tie ribbons in the um, corners of my duvets, uh, duvet covers, to tie around the duvet to, to keep it 
flat inside the duvet cover. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put these little squares on and um, I might even go get some ribbons out of my sewing basket to do the corners. Well, that is one big job done. Um, now I need to change the thread in the bobbin and can't remember how to do that and can't even remember how to get the bobbin out of the machine. So back to the computer I go. Just have to show you something funny for a second here. I was like pushing on this little cover every which way and then if all else fails, read the instructions. <laughs> okay, now we're going to try and thread the bobbin. Uh, apparently this machine came with, oh look at that, the thread was almost gone. Um, this machine came with three bobbins, of course, I don't know. I'm, th I'm glad this one was in the machine already because I do not know where the others are. I don't remember doing that so many times. The bobbin goes flying all over the place. And look at these horrible cheap little plastic bobbins. You know, my old machine, of course, everything was metal. The foot pedal was metal. This is all plastic now. I really, really regret getting rid of, rid of that little old machine. It was very much like this. Um, it's just that it was all metal, of course, like everything used to be. So I'm really pleased with these. I got two red and black ones with the white ruffle and two navy and red ones with the red ruffle. <laughs> yes, I can just imagine what that's going to look like if they crawl into one of their dirt baths, but um, the poor little thing needs something. Now I might find some um, other fabrics that, um, you know, some denim or something that is a little more sturdy and uh, not going to get so dirty, but I just wanted to try this pattern. I wanted to try these out and I think these are pretty darn cute. So I'm really happy with that. Got a bunch of stuff today done today. Now I gotta go find some black thread. <laughs> Try this again. But I think I'm done for the day. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share this video with your family and friends. And we'll see you next time.